Uh, any, any one of those. Andrew, can you indicate the connection between ought and love? Yes. Um, I mean, both are there to make you happy <laughs> or to enhance your happiness or contribute to your happiness. Both are responses to sense of life. Ayn Rand makes this point in the Romantic Manifesto. Um, let, me just, let me just find this. One second, one second, one second. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, so let me read you from the Romantic Manifesto because this is where she talks about it. There are two aspects of man's existence which are special province and expression of his sense of life. That's the sense you have about the world, the, the sense that is derived from the answers you give to the, this is me talking, to the most fundamental question. You know, what is existence? Why am I here? Can, is, is reality knowable? The sense, the, the, the emotional state, the emotional world in which you live uh, that, that, is the, that comes from having answered those questions and a variety of questions like that, fundamental questions about yourself. That sense of life, so the, the, the two special provinces expression of a sense of life are love and art. And I continue reading from Ayn Rand. I am referring here to a romantic love in the serious meaning of that term, as distinguished from the superficial infatuations of those whose sense of life is devoid of any consistent values, of any lasting emotions other than fear. Love is a response to values. It is with a person's sense of life that one falls in love, with that essential sum, that fundamental stand or way of facing existence, which is the essence of a personality. One falls in love with the embodiment of the values that form the person's character, which are reflected in his wildest, widest goals and smallest gestures, which create the style of his soul. Wow. The style of his soul. The individual style of a unique, unrepeatable, irreplaceable consciousness. That is such beautiful writing. That is, what a deep thinker, what a beautiful writer, how he condensed so much into the style of his soul. So, that, so what you fall in love with is, is the style of somebody's soul. Um, let's see. And, and of course, each one of us is unique because each one of us has a style and part of the challenge in life is to, to control that style, to, to shape that style, particularly when you're young, with the right kind of values, with the right kind of ideas, with the right kind of conclusions. <coughs> Excuse me. It is one's own sense of life that acts as the selector. So you respond to somebody else's sense of life, but it's your sense of life which is responding to this. Uh, so it's one's own sense of life that acts as a selector in response to what it recognizes as one's own basic values in the person of another. It is not a matter of professed convictions, though these are not irrelevant. It is a matter of much more profound, conscious and subconscious harmony. So it's that those things in which there's harmony between the conscious and subconscious when, when it's good, right? And that leads to this particular soul, particular style, particular sense of life. Many errors, and uh, this is Ayn Rand, many errors and tragic disillusionments are possible in this process of emotional recognition since the sense of life by itself is not a reliable cognitive guide. This is the importance of introspection, of recognizing your sense of life, recognizing that your values, recognizing uh, uh, when you are pursuing them, when you're not pursuing them, what they are. And if there are, this is again Ayn Rand, and if there are degrees of evil, then one of the most evil consequences of mysticism in terms of human suffering is the belief that love is a matter of the heart, not the mind. That love is an emotion independent of reason. That love is blind and impervious to the power of philosophy. Love is the expression of philosophy, of a subconscious philosophical sum. And perhaps no other aspect of human existence needs the conscious power of philosophy quite so desperately. It's beautiful. When that power is called upon to verify and support an emotional appraisal, 
when love is a conscious integration of reason and emotion, of mind and values, then, and only then, it is the greatest reward of a man's life. Man, it feels like tears. Uh, it feels like getting all emotional. That is amazing writing, and amazing thinking, and deep, deep, right? When that power is called upon to verify and support an emotion, so you feel an emotion, but, it, but you don't act on emotions. Now you have to bring forward the power of reason to appraise the emotion, right? And when that appraisal is consistent with the emotion and both are for love, right? When love is a conscious integration of reason and emotion, You've thought about it. You feel this emotion, but you're also thinking about it. Yes, this makes sense when you get that integration, right? When love is a conscious integration of reason and emotion, of mind and values, mind and, and, and the things one acts to gain or keep, the things that are crucial to one's own happiness and life and, and, and flourishing. It's just so well written. When love is a conscious integration of reason and emotion, of mind and values, then... And only then, it is the greatest reward of man's life. There you have it, folks. That is worth fighting for. That is worth loving for. That is worth living for. And if you haven't read the Romantic Manifesto, go read it. And if you haven't read Ayn Rand, go read Ayn Rand. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of motivation. All right, everybody. Uh, what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.